I'm Avon. I'm Sonia. And I'm Kate. And today we are dishing with you from Sette Bello, located at 3101 North Wilson Boulevard. And we're in Arlington. That's right. We crossed the bridge. That's right. We convinced her. Yeah, we're Virginia Virginians. That's right. Well, not we only did we cross handshake, the bridge, though, we made this one come all the way from Maryland. I know. It's, it's, a, it's a show today. It's, we're bringing everybody in across borders just to bring them to you. And today our guest is Kevin Callagher. He is a political cartoonist. And you may know him just by his signature, Cal, Cal Tunes. And now you do political satire. Mm -hmm. So tell us what the difference between political cartoons and political satire is. Is there any difference? Uh, well, the thing is, is that we're just using a different medium. Uh, we're making commentaries using drawings. Uh, today, of course, satire, it used to be that cartoons were the satire. But now with television, you only have to think of like The Daily Show and, and other, and Colbert and people like that, is that satire is spreading out to all new mediums. And all, us in the cartoon world who used to live in newspapers are also trying to find a new home for ourselves on the internet. Because how many political cartoonists are out there these days? Ooh, Not there. many, right? Yeah, in fact, maybe 20 years ago we had 200 some odd, and now we're down to about 85 full-time cartoonists in the U.S. Well, you're not, you have to pay attention to everything to be a cartoonist, though. I mean, to be a writer, you write about your story, but to be a cartoonist, you're mixing in um, current events, political personalities, um, even like things that you might see in, in non political. I mean, you're trying to mix it all into one picture. That's got to be awesome. hard. How do you do that? Come on, we're <laughs> awesome. You are. <laughs> you know, it is, it's an interesting sort of mix of different skill sets because you have the, the columnist. The, where you are. You're a news columnist, so you have to do the journalistic thing, keep up with what's going on in the world, all over the world, not just, you know, what's in Washington, you know, on, on all different four corners of the planet. Then you put on the hat of a satirist who's trying to make humor get your comic across, and then you put on the hat of an artist who's right. using pictures to deliver your satire and commentary. Do you find it challenging sometimes with, uh, depending on where you sit on, on the aisle politically, because uh, an example that comes to mind is what happened to the cartoonist in Europe when he when he did something on uh, Mohammed, mm -hmm. and you know the backlash that led to that. And yeah. do, you, do you have do you have any concerns along those lines on, on your end? It's really important to, for, be, for us in the business to understand that we have a very powerful weapon. It's funny you ask that question because just last week I was in Beirut and Amman speaking to groups, and we talked an awful lot about the issue of the cartoons, the Danish cartoons who depicted Muhammad and the sensitivities involved. And even in every culture, there's hot buttons. If you go there, um, you're gonna get reaction. In the US, the, you know, the subjects that cause all sorts of controversy are abortion, mm -hmm. okay, Arab-Israeli relations, race, uh, religion. You do those, boy, you know, be prepared. But you have to tread carefully, but it doesn't mean that you should avoid them altogether. It's always, it's more how you depict your ideas rather than what you, what you say normally. And you're doing some really interesting things, I know, from the last, ele from the last presidential election. You moved into animation, so moving from the flat graphic of a uh, newspaper to something that moves and talks and is interactive. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, you know, as eyeballs are moving away from newspapers and cartoons have been, you know, and newspapers, their futures have been intertwined for centuries, mm -hmm. that if a cartoonist is to survive, you have to really go to the internet and there stuff moves. So animation is kind of the, uh, the way you're going to want to go. Fortunately, I have a long history with the animation. You know, I did my senior thesis at college a long time ago. Uh, it was, it was so a, ahead of your time. <laughs> it was a 13 minute long animated cartoon. So I've been, you know, venturing into animation, both 2D and 3D. I've started my own animation production company based in Baltimore. But uh, what was really fun during the 2008 campaign, um, I was on a, a, a nationwide tour with Second City, you know, the improv comedy troupe. And we did an actual um, improv where we could create a live uh, press conference between the digitally animated character who appeared on screen and the audience. And essentially what happened was, um, I was backstage wearing a motion capture suit, you know, those leotards with lights all over them, you know? And then I would, um, I would move, my character on screen would move at the same time. As I talk, he would talk. And so we would have the audience ask George Bush, I was being George Bush, questions, and I, I'd answer your questions, George Bush. <laughs> I wouldn't get them right. <laughs> I try. <laughs> and it was really fun. The audience really did not know what to make of this cartoon character. So the, I believe the future holds a great deal of opportunities that we're not even aware of for visual satire. Like you said, you have to be more creative and innovative because you're moving away from just newspapers. Yes. Know, one static you know, source of media. Now we have, like you said, the Colbert and, and, and Daily Show. And this is actually the first time I've heard something like that. And I've seen other political 
uh, satirical cartoons, especially animation like mm. Chip Jab. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Like that, so. Yeah, I used to think like 20 years ago, you know, there was, you know, uh, the internet was not, not hardly there, so we didn't have any YouTube or Google or anything, but even cell phones weren't even that much used. So 20 years from now, you can't even imagine the kind of platforms and opportunities that will be available. And satire always finds a way. Um, you know, if you give us a new thing, you give us a blank, you give us a, a white tablecloth, forget about it. It's going to have drawings on it if you leave cartoons around. Well, let's talk, the animation that you're doing, um, are you are you going to limit yourself to only the people that, that you can impersonate? Or are you, did you just learn Bush because you wanted to create I, satire know, on him? Yeah, I could work on Bush. And I, I've done create some other animations where you have to get voice actors in okay. to do various different things. Like, I'm not too good, you know, I couldn't do Hillary, for example. Okay. And, uh, and Sarah Palin, I'm not so good at Sarah Palin. But I think that, you know, um, there's going to be more and more opportunities in center with not just cartoons but video mashups you see some really great creative right. stuff being created online today and i think that the young folks coming along who are future satirists are not excited by what they see in a the newspaper they're excited by what they see in the web and they will create new types of stuff that i'm really excited about i guess i wanted to ask that because i wanted to know do you if you if you do like a political um, personality. Mm-hmm. Say that you you loved Bush and you didn't like Obama. Mm-hmm. Would you still create satire about Bush if you loved him, or or vice versa? I mean, would you still make fun of someone that you appreciated? Mm, I think everyone's everyone's different. You know what happens is the, even those who you vote for, you they get into office and they do stupid things. Come on, you know, and and you you want to slap them around the face because you know it's a dirty business when you get into, involved in politics. So um, it's not um, un- n- n- normal. What's the word? Where in normal? What's the word? <laughs> abnormal. 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 What's it? Not You're abnormal. too used to being Bush. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're normal. That's right. Um, to you know, to to do cartoons against those people who you voted for. You know who are you know who you endorse. Um, there was a lot of questions, for example, asked even with John Stewart. You know now you got Obama in office, what are you going to do? Right. Well, there's tons of material out there for you to, to make fun of him or to take him to task for the things that he's doing. But there's also the whole political environment that just is crazy. And that as citizens, we can look at it and say, you know, come on, guys, let's get down to the, the business of trying to help us out rather than playing this dance that you're going. And that's what I think our job is. Okay. What's your favorite one that you've done, your favorite cartoon, one that we would... Of all your, you oh, please buy my. This is my favorite. <laughs> your but I really, I'm going to bring this because this is this is um, on my new wall calendar that we established for the Economist this year, which I drew the entire thing and researched it, and it was just named a finalist in calendar of oh, the year. Oh wow! wow. Calendar That's of the year. Wow! Well, I didn't want. I didn't That's know that was right. a thing. Two congratulations! <laughs> I don't know if it is going to be a thing. And it was named most original card calendar. Oh, um, this is but fantastic. Is that, um, that I, it's all hand-drawn um, wow. and it's uh, all original events that I researched and found and then I did a giant cartoon yeah, mashup of But all now the that you have events. the computer experience and you're doing the animation, mm-hmm. you're still doing the hand drawings? And that's why I did it like this because in this world of, anim- of com- com- computer stuff, the hand stuff Hand drawn will become more and more valuable. How long did it take you to finish the whole calendar? Um, four months. I'm working on 2011 right okay. now. 2011. Well, there you go. we're looking forward to seeing some more controversial things, some more entertaining things, some more comic things, and satirical things coming from you. We love seeing your stuff. Thanks so much for coming it's on been with fun. us. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming with us this time on the District Dish. Check back next time. We'll have more interesting people to meet.